Welcome back. It's time to check in with Bob Bull, sold over a wax to see what's happened in the crop world on this very good Friday. Good morning, Bob. Good morning. What did you guys do yesterday with that beautiful weather? You know, it was so nice. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it was that nice, so I went out and I was monkeying around here and there. Don't know I was I looking it. for you, though, Bob. In I mean, the convertible. Did you, did you drive? No, I don't, I, no, I don't drive it anymore. I, oh, okay. No, it's in the shed. I, although, boy, I'll tell you, I thought about it. <laughs> I might do that today. I don't know. I mean, uh, I bet this is the last day mm -hmm. we see 50 bet, degrees. I'll bet you drove the bus with the windows open, Bob. <laughs> I did. Actually, <laughs> took the Memorial Girls basketball team up to Rice Lake last night. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Wow, beautiful day to go up 53, mm -hmm. wasn't it? it beautiful was. night. Beautiful yep. night. Well, let's uh, take a look at what's going on this morning on a Friday. The Government Accountability Office issued a report earlier this week that was critical of how the crop insurance industry operates. DTN Network reports say that that GT GAO report shows the 13 private companies that sold crop insurance over the past decade have seen an average of $13 billion a year in underwriting gains and other costs paid by taxpayers. The report also said a small percentage of the largest farms generate the largest profits for insurers. So with that information, the GAO is recommending capping insurance profits and expenses that are billed to taxpayers, as well as setting an income means test for farmers. But that report isn't being accepted uh, too well by the powers that be. House Agriculture Committee Chairman Congressman Glenn Thompson of Pennsylvania said the report isn't worth the paper it's printed on. He told the reporters the GAO uses inconsistent performance metrics in making comparisons about profit margins, and they completely ignore the benefits of crop insurance, which Thompson said is one of the most successful examples of a public-private relationship that we have. Well, the U.S. balance of trade for agriculture is trending in the wrong direction. For years, we always had a favorable situation when it came to farm exports versus farm imports, but the last few years, that's changed, and it's expected to be that way again in 2024. New numbers from the Economic Research Service show our agricultural exports in 2024 will hit $169.5 billion, but that's a drop of $2.5 billion from this year's exports. Leading that drop was expected to be wheat exports down $800 million and corn expected to be about $500 million lower next year than they are this year. Overall, grain and feed exports are forecast to fall $1.3 billion in the new year. On the other side of the ledger, our ag imports next year are expected to reach $200 billion, up $500 million from this year. 2024 would be the third year in a row that our farm imports have been more than our farm exports. Today is day one of the 93rd annual Wisconsin Farmers Union Convention. That meeting will start about noon today with the convention wrapping up on Sunday afternoon with the announcement of uh, board elections and discussion of resolutions. Saturday morning, tomorrow morning, the meeting will start about 9.45 Farmers Union President Darren Von Ruden will give his presidential address, that meeting being held at Chula Vista Resort down in Wisconsin Dells. Let's go to the market board where markets were higher yesterday. In spite of our report on exports, exports were pretty good this past week and uh, prices were higher yesterday. And, of course, we've got that big report coming out today from the USDA. Overnight, though, March corn down a fraction, sitting at 487. Wheat down four cents at 638. March soybeans up two to three cents, 1333. Yesterday morning, the bean price was 1319. Well, the dairy markets couldn't handle success. In the last couple of days, they were higher. Yesterday, they went the other direction. That barrel cheese price, $1.59 a pound. Down two cents, blocks down a penny. Butter was unchanged at 267. Class three futures, December down six at 1627. And uh, then we kind of hit the skids, both January and February, down 40 cents. February obviously falling below $17 as prices were lower out through July. So that's where we are this morning as we go along. And I fell asleep watching the girls' volleyball. Did the Wisconsin women's volleyball team win last night, I they, hope? They did. Three games, uh, three sets mm -hmm. to one. Oh, good. And they'll uh, play Oregon. They yeah. knocked off Purdue, and that'll be Saturday night. All right. Well, hopefully they can keep on going. Yep. 
100%. Right. Enjoy the day, you guys. See you, too. Bye -bye. Have a good one. Have a good weekend.